Hear me? No, OK. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Song. Uh, so nice to see you today. Um, today, I want to talk about uh, next cloud architecture in the near future. It's about uh, near means about uh, one or two years later. OK? So it's a content is about, uh, uh, yeah, more simply it's uh, something, something. But I have uh, some pictures. Uh, when I start, OK. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. OK. Yeah. So I like this picture uh, when I talk about changes. Let's look at this. It's a 1900 New York City street. There's a no carry, uh, actually, you know, there's a no car in here, only one. OK? But 13 years later, there's no carriage at all. That is a change. Nowadays, we cannot predict actually about you know, one or two layers of our you know, industry, especially IT area, right? Uh, but so I want to talk about uh, our uh, next generation architecture. And it's, uh, uh, please, please as understand, this is my personal opinion, that is uh, AWS you know, official one, okay? <laughs> So let's start from the simple is a standard architecture here. So maybe I think you have a microservice architecture, and also maybe you have an API, you know, uh, server layers, and also maybe you have you will use API gateways. Also, there are some uh, you know Microsoft modules and application layers, and also you will maybe you have uh, some uh, cache layers, and also yeah, definitely uh, you are using our RDS or something, right? Also, there's uh, some uh, <coughs> your uh, streaming you know, services like uh, Amazon Kinesis or you, you may use uh, Kafka uh, by yourself. And also, uh, there's uh, some processing and also, yeah, there's a REST or ML or something. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's start from here. Okay, <coughs> the one topic is more so list. Here's a question. What is the best way to avoid cloud login? So there's many answers, right? OK. My one is this one. On your calls, not environment. Yeah, to do this, we have a many technical you know, you know, services and technologies. So uh, typical one is our, our Lambda as a yeah, cloud computing, cloud code, cloud computing, actually. And also, uh, there's a deprivation and, and uh, the important you know, concept is infrastructure as a code, right? So the more you use your Lambda, then you can you know, avoid uh, cloud login, actually. Because you just own your code, you do not you know, have environment at all. So here's the problem. Actually, uh, you should integrate your uh, serverless architecture with infrastructure as a code. That is a system problem. So you should uh, support infrastructure as code. Also, well, you have a structure, you, you have a uh, lambda or some calls, but you should manage the environment too. That is, how could it that? The simple way is our SAM. So to resolve this situation, we support SAM. There's a serverless application model so in cloud formation. So, yeah, so definitely you can use those kind of technologies uh, to, you know, suit your infrastructure cloud login. And so you can also make and yeah, create a CI CD pipeline, uh, do, I, do, do, it in yourself, do it yourself way, and also you can the other serverless frameworks. But I strongly recommend you use SAM. So basically, Dockerization is a really, really you know, important technology when you want to you know, avoid a, a cloud login. So we, our you know, SA model is a really important when you are uh, in uh, your uh, def def uh, definition of your serverless code. So SA is a specification that defines serverless application. And I strongly recommend use this SA with cloud formation and other your uh, infrastructure as a code. So spec is very simple. 
there is a uh, YAML style uh, template files, and there's a function definitions and function execution policy rules, and also environment variable declarations and event source mapping. That is a typical example of our yeah, SM. And when you develop uh, Lambda, then uh, I have some you know, recommendations about that. So there's a Lambda design tips. So, well, definitely use your CloudFormation and SAM, and also uh, plan to break your application functionality into decoupled models and embrace asynchronousity. And also never keep application state in your Lambda function code. It's very important. If the server become you know, stateful sta server, then you cannot use Lambda or such kind of things in your you know, uh, cloud, uh, cloud service architecture. And final thing is very important. Use the right data source. And you should ask this question to yourself. Do you really need any RDMS in your workload? That's a very important question. I'll take, take a look at it later. And next thing is actually, uh, well, maybe you need ECS, like a container orchestration services, definitely. So, simply speaking, the more you use Dockerization, then you can get more advantages. So, we have ACS. Combination Lambda and Amazon ECS, and also application load balancer, yeah, you will use more, more, more in your infrastructure architecture. So, let's take a look at the changes. Here we are. You can see that there is a ECS services and also many Lambda services and also even in your application workload, yeah, the cluster will be replaced by AWS Lambda. Next thing is the next database technologies. So I asked this one question before. Why do you need RDMS in your you know, architecture? So that's why we have no SQL solutions, but based on my experience, I think 80% of your DBMS workload will be replaced by NoSQL. Yeah, NoSQL technology is growing fast, and also we have uh, NoSQL services, as the name is Dynamo Database. But when you use the Dynamo Database, you usually face one problem. Maybe I think it's, uh, you face this problem at least once, the hotkey problem. Hotkey problem is uh, actually traffic hits some partition intensively. That means you generated you know, uh, your keys not evenly. Or your uh, handling error code does not follow the you know, backward expan exp exponential uh, bag of logics. Yeah. That is a, so, so, so hockey problem is a uh, quite common problem uh, when you use uh, Dynamo da database and you should avoid these problems. But uh, one thing you should know that is uh, the formula for calculating the number of partitions. This is the formula. Actually, Dynamo database up to 3,000 read unit capacities and 1,000 write unit capacities in one partition. And a single partition stores about 10 gigabyte of data. So calculation is very simple. There is a five, uh, 8 gigabyte and ICU 5,000, WCU 500. Then uh, number of partition for throughput will be 3. But number of partition for, for Size will be one. Then we will take a maximum, you know, bigger numbers. Then partition number will be three. That means every, you know, uh, 
actually RCU and uh, uh, size is evenly distributed to each partitions. So each partition ha will have uh, RCU per partition will be 1,066 and WCU 106 and data partition will be 2.66 gigabyte. When you change the capacity, when you increase these numbers, then problem becomes a different things. So every capacity evenly distributed, that in these cases will increase the number of partitions according to the formula above. And this means each partition will have equal, equal capacity. But the problem is actually uh, occurs in decreasing cases. In this case is, in this case is we do not decrease the number of partitions, only decrease the CUs in each partitions. That means a capacity error could occur more often. Yeah. So uh, Dynamo database is a really great services, but there is a lot of good alternative solutions, alternative no SQL solutions in the world. So one of my recommendations is Couchbase. Now Couchbase actually support many great features like, uh, you know, uh, actually uh, uh, Couchbase uh, has an architecture, uh, all nodes are equal and single node and also that means uh, easy to scale uh, your cluster. And that means there's a no single, of, single point of failure. And also, it has uh, at least five uh, replications in the, our architecture. Yes. Uh, I, I, want, I don't want to talk about the couch basis of architecture in here. Uh, so my recommendation is here. You can easily integrate Couchbase is with elastic searching. Couchbase is provide some plugins to integrate with elastic search engines. That means you can easily realize your real-time search and analytics databases in your architectures. And yeah, and as consequences, you can get a, a huge advantage about a high performances and scalability and availability. But maybe you still need your RDS, right? Then please use Aura. Aura is a great cloud you know, database, RDS uh, services we created. Uh, actually, uh, it's, um, it's my personal opinion. There is no reason to use uh, Oracle anymore. Yeah. If you have any questions, please, <laughs> please let me know later. OK. <coughs> And there's a, so, uh, another new, uh, new database technologies. So you can add more new uh, database technologies to your infrastructure. That is, that is graph databases. Let's take a look at this. There's a node and relationships. And re there are so many relationships between nodes. If you express such kind of information in your traditional relation databases, then it could be how, right? Like, uh, you know, the famous SQL join problem. SQL join, yes, actually it requires a lot of cost. So all join actually are executed every time you carry the relationship. And the problem is that basically our databases use B3 algorithm, that means if you add more data into your you know, databases, then the number of leaf node will increase hugely and it makes your search performance slow, very, very fast. So we need, more, uh, we need another architecture for handling such kind of information. That is a uh, yes. Graph databases. Yeah, the famous one is actually now is a Neo4j, right? Neo4j actually contains their uh, 
data, all stores data into the memories, cache layer. And they actually do not manage their uh, relationship. Actually, uh, they have, they store the pointer, point addresses to designate their stored data area. So that means uh, it does not need lookups and so it makes so fast. Result is here. Okay, if you look at these tables, yeah, you can compare the performances between MySQL and Neo4j. It's, it's, a, it's much faster than MySQL. And there's a, one is a code example to carry uh, the Neo4j. So you, you can uh, easily uh, distinguish oh, which where you should uh, apply the uh, Neo4j. So if there is a more connectedness of your data set, then I think is a uh, Neo4j is m uh, much much proper than traditional one. That is, uh, let's take a look at the infrastructure changes. Then there is a huge. Well, you can check take uh, some elastic searchy and cost basis, you know, integrations, and also there is a uh, in, in such cases you don't need the cache layers because. Uh, Couchbase itself support cache layers in each node. And also, you can use graph databases and you will use Aurora Database Engine 2. And still, you will use DynamoDB 2, I think. Yeah, that is the change of the data layers. Next one is analytics. So, I think you, you already very, very, you know, have interested in uh, AI and deep learnings. So there's uh, some, you know, many applications. So we have already uh, Lex and Poly and recognition. But if you want to apply your own, you know, deep learning training models, then you should, you know, create your own training model by yourself. Usually by using MXNet or TensorPro. Yeah, in this case, well, some, Deep learning is a very, actually, concept is itself a very simple. The theory actually started from around 1950s or 60s, right? And maybe I think you know that so round one is actually uh, represent neuron, and line represent synapses. So, there is an input node, and also, there is an output node. This area is a hidden layer. We don't know how many, you know, how many number of layers is involved in this, you know, parts. So that's why we call it as deep. So we call it as the deep neural network. But the concept, basic calculation of a neural network is very simple. Let's take a look at this. The most common neural model nowadays is sigmoid, sigmoid function. And you can see that the num many numbers in here. Okay, let's look at it, all the things. So there's the numbers. So, and you, you uh, multiply this number by this number. The, this number is, we call it as a weight, weight number. So we can get a, some number, in this case uh, 0, 0 0.8 and 0 0.2, we got a 1, then we have a neurons, we uh, apply the sigmoid functions to this number, then we got the number 0.73. That is the feed food way. And there is a, some, so, so we, we call it actually the uh, feed food means a food propagation and there is a backward propagation. Uh, backward propagation actually the recalculation about the weight factors. 
that is a, to minimize the margin of error of outputs. So we actually repeatedly, so neural, uh, tr to training, train the neural network model, we repeatedly you know, uh, calculate feed forward and feed backward. Then finally, you can get the optimum weight numbers that is the you know the result is the training model deep learning model that means you requires a lot of you know resources computing resources when you create uh, training models so well uh, one of our recommendation is using our uh, AWS lambda if you use lambdas you can uh, parallelly uh, you know uh, calculate your uh, you know comp you know uh, training models in parallel, and you can easily, you know, get the result. Okay, uh, so it's a very uh, typical uh, examples, uh, MN list classification. So there is uh, some uh, examples, so you can get many handwritten uh, exam uh, examples. Then you can train, uh, uh, you know, predict the uh, you know number of you know handwritten you know uh, pictures. Yes, there is a yeah. So there is an input layer and hidden layer, output layer. So basically, so you uh, you will uh, train your uh, models, and then you can your uh, your own training models. Well, some if you want to, well, there's so many you know applications actually. Some face recognitions and uh, you know, uh, you know uh, sentence translation and something. You can use a lot of you know. Also, uh, yes, so there is uh, some our deep learning <coughs> lambda workflow. It says if you use a lambda uh, lambda cap, if you use our editor to lambda, yeah, they can easily you know calculate. The training model. So uh, I will show you the example of the lambda example. So here is the comparison of performances. If you launch each instance only one, then it usually take uh, four minutes. Relatively, if you use lambda, it took only yeah, forty-seven seconds. We are using many applications, actually. Yeah, so fraud detection, churn prediction, yeah, customer support. So <clears throat> finally, we got the, uh, this architecture. So you are going to apply many AI and deep learning architecture and applications in your analytics you know, infrastructure stack. So that is you know, my opinion, personal opinion, you can get the you know, next uh, cloud architecture in the near future. Thank you. Yeah, any questions? Yeah. I'm just wondering one thing about the deep learning of Lambda, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of graphic cards do you use there? Like, what kind of graphic cards behind Lambda? Uh, so in such cases, we don't use uh, you know uh, GPU, so just, just the GPU. Yeah, just comparison uh, you know based on CPU calculation. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we you may support you know uh, P2 or G2 types. Yeah, if you use the. Pardon? Are there P2 instances in Singapore? P2 instances? No, not yet. Yeah. Any question? Okay. Thank you.